Hi, this is Peg from the International Kitchen. Today we're going to make gougere. Gougere are a type of savory choux pastry. And most people know that choux pastry can be used to make sweets like cream puffs and declares. And what many people don't know is you can also use it to make savory puffs. Um, so we'll be making these, they're called gougere. Um, they are a simple choux pastry. You can follow the same instructions to make a sweet choux pastry as well. Um, but the, these just have some salt and pepper and cheese added to them. Uh, so let's get started. You'll need a good heavy bottom pan, a cup of milk, and four tablespoons of butter. We're going to put this on a stove, bring it to a boil. So choux pastry is also called pâte au choux, that's the French term for it. And choux means cabbages. And the reason it's called pâte au choux is because they look like little cabbages once, once they're done, these little pastry balls. So just bring the milk to a boil, get all of the butter melted. All right, this is boiling. We are going to take it off the stove briefly and stir in a cup of flour. Dump it all in at once. And stir it to make a nice gloopy mess using a wooden spoon as the classic way to do it. Okay. And then we are going to add also a pinch of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to return this to the stove over medium low heat and cook it, stirring constantly until it is quite dry and pulls away easily from the size of the pan. Um, and this will take a couple of minutes. One thing that's difference, different between a sweet choux pastry that you would use for uh, an eclair or cream puff and the choux pastry that you use for bougère is that uh, a classic choux pastry would use water or potentially half water and half milk, um, although the classic recipe does call for, for water, um, whereas the bougère pastry dough uh, uses milk, at least half milk. In this case, we've used all milk. Just going to keep stirring this, and you can see it's already quite thick. Okay, so it's just been a couple minutes, and the dough is no longer sticking to the spoon. There is a nice um, kind of crust that's formed around the pan, but the dough itself is not sticking to the pan, and that is a sign that it is done. So now we will put the dough in a bowl and we're going to let it just cool for, cool for a minute. As you can see it's, it's quite stiff, quite dry. So we have been letting this cool just for a minute just to get uh, the worst of the heat away before we add the eggs. Um, pâte au choux is something that you can make on pretty much any of our cooking vacations in France um, and during our cooking classes, our one-day cooking classes in France as well. It's one of the quintessential French pastries, so it's, um, it's a surprisingly easy dough. Um, it just takes a lot of stirring, um, and it's versatile. You can use it, like I said, in, in classic sweets like eclairs, uh, cream puffs, but then you can also use it for savory preparations too. So we're gonna start adding the eggs. These are four large uh, room temperature eggs. Add them one at a time, and you have to beat and make sure that they're incorporated um, before you add the next one. You will notice when you're incorporating the eggs that it looks incredibly broken. It does not look at all like a nice smooth dough, but you just keep beating it until it does. There's, there comes a point when you're stirring it, it, it seems like you're just pushing dough and egg around and it's not ever going to mix together. Um, but there comes a point when you're stirring it where suddenly it does uh, 
start to just blend together. Um, it's kind of a good arm workout, but as you can see, it's no longer egg and dough. It's very eggy dough. And we're going to just keep adding the eggs one at a time. It's moving around a lot, so I'm going to just put a damp dishcloth underneath it to help keep it in place. Now, as you can see, the consistency has changed considerably with this third egg. Um, it's definitely getting closer to that pata choux consistency that you want. Okay, here we go. It is just about ready. It is smooth. Make sure I get all of the chunks from the side well incorporated. But it is just a smooth, um, luscious kind of dough right now. So the last things we're going to add are a little bit of nutmeg, um, just a, a bit of freshly ground nutmeg. You should always use freshly ground nutmeg. It has about 10 times the amount of flavor as nutmeg that you would buy pre-ground. And a cup of cheese. This is um, more than a cup right here. We're going to um, sprinkle a little bit over the tops as well. So I'm going to add most of this, but not all. Looks like about a cup. And then this also just gets mixed in. This is, um, I should tell you what type of cheese it is. It's a Gruyere. Uh, the classic Gougere will use some type of Gruyere, or Swiss or Emmental cheese. Um, you can also use other hard um, cheeses like a cheddar you could use. Parmesan is, is quite good with them. But the classic preparation is with something like a Gruyere. All right, that looks incorporated. Now there are two ways you can form the pastries. You can, the Gougere, you can put them, um, you can use a spoon, to, to, uh, two spoons to kind of form them, or you can pipe them, which is sort of the classic preparation. So now we're just going to put the dough into a pastry bag. The oven is preheating to 400 degrees. And we're just going to put this all in here. Okay, it's not all going to fit in one. Um, you don't want to overfill it and have to squeeze out the back. Set that aside for round two. Here we have a um, parchment lined baking sheet. Uh, nice little tip whenever you're doing anything with dough as you can use a little bit of the dough to stick the paper. So you want about one to two tablespoons of dough for each gougere 
and you want to leave a couple of inches between them. They do puff, which is kind of the point. These are such a great little snack. It's great as part of an aperitivo, or an aperitif. Um, they are great uh, served with soup. You can fill them with some type of savory, usually cheesy filling. I'm just going to do a couple more on this sheet and then prep another. But in the meantime, we can go ahead and bake these. I'm just going to sprinkle just a couple little bits of cheese on each, each one. So I've prepped the second pan, and the first pan is in the oven. They will bake for about 20 to 22 minutes, and I will rotate the pan halfway through to ensure even baking. And once they're finished, take them out and uh, pop one in your mouth once they're full enough. You can eat them warm or room temperature, and they're just delicious. Okay, well, I wish you could smell how good these smell. Um, but you can see how beautiful they are. They are puffed, cheesy, golden, wonderful, delicious. Um, so excited. There you have it. Uh, you can freeze these. You can freeze them once they're baked. You can also freeze them before they're baked. You can. Uh, form them on the tray, put the baking tray in the freezer, um, wait till they're frozen solid, and then put them in a plastic bag, and when you're ready, just pull them out, put them on a baking tray, and bake them uh, straight from frozen. We hope you've had a good time making bougie with us. Uh, you can find more information on any of our cooking classes and cooking vacations in France on our website, www.theinternationalkitchen.com, and we hope you enjoy your bougie. Bon appétit!